Hello, everybody. My name is Juan Balmori, and I'm a program manager in the Outlook Addings team. And I can't wait to tell you how, how can you seamlessly integrate your business solution into the Outlook experience by using Office Addings. I'm going to be joined later in the video uh, by Hitesh Mangwar, who is also a program manager in my team, and by Mario Samudio, who is a product manager in Let's Sign It. So let's get started. Uh, so there, there are three things that I want to get you out of this of this session. Now, first of all, I'm, we're going to do like a, an overview of Office Addins, but the three main messages are the Mailbox 1.10 API plus event-based Addins release. Uh, the second, uh, we're going to announce uh, also an additional events in our preview. And third, I'm going to have an update for all our Addins developers for Mac. So with that, uh, I will start by giving you a brief overview of what are Office add-ins. Uh, an Office add-in, you can think about an Office add-in as an extension to Office applications, particularly in this case for Outlook. And it's basically a web application that is going to be loaded along with your Outlook application. Uh, it consists, web add-ins consist of a web application plus a manifest file. And the beauty of, of, of web add-ins is that the that are built on web technology, which means that you can actually run them in multiple platforms. So the idea is that you write your application once, and then it runs in Windows, on the web, in Outlook for Mac, and also in mobile devices. So this is something that that it was not previ previously doable uh, in Office extensibility. Uh, and not only that, you know, the other thing that it's really cool about Office add-ins is that then you you can they are super easy to deploy because you can either upload your add-in to, to AppSource, and then basically your customers can go to our store and install the add-ins by themselves. Or you can use Microsoft 365 integrated apps, which is was formerly known as a centralized deployment, and you can have someone in your IT department to deploy your add-in to different users or groups within the organization. Another key aspect of web add-ins is that we provide a JavaScript API uh, known as Office.js, uh, that you can use to interact with the uh, with the different products. In this case, with Outlook, uh, and that's very simple. Uh, but let's take a look about a more closer look about the manifest. The manifest is a file that describes how your add-in is going to behave inside of Outlook, and the way you do it is by defining extension points. So extension points are basically how, you know, if your add-in is going to show up in a specific Outlook experience, like for example, when you're creating an email or when you're reading emails, uh, you can also expose your add-in when, uh, when you're organizing a, a meeting, an appointment, or if you're reading it, basically you're an attendee of an appointment. All those we call extension points. Your extension points can also be what we call contextual add-ins. Contextual add-ins uh, activate uh, on reading. They're, they're only available for the reading email scenario, and you can activate them if you detect, for example, an address or a phone number, or a URL or a regular expression in your email. The most common and most typical type of add-in is the adding commands. So basically, you expose buttons in the ribbon. Uh, in again, if you are reading or reading or composing an email, uh, you click on those buttons. We open a task pane, which is your web application in this case. Uh, what we are going to be talking here. Uh, this is an example of how uh, you know an adding command looks like. Uh, as you, you can see here. Uh, uh, on the top right, we have the logo of Let's Sign It, actually, which is this uh, a preview of the add-in. And when you click that button, we open a task pane. Uh, so there's this this an extension point that happens when you're, in this case, when you're composing an email. What we are going to show you in this video, so this requires you, obviously, to click a button and show the task pane. But what is really cool is that we're going we're gonna to show you how to introduce logic that can happen just by the use and using Outlook. In this case, this is a good example because uh, uh, when you compose an email, in this case, we're inserting a signature, as you can see in the top left and the bottom left of this image. And uh, that will happen just by the user clicking on new email. And I, I'm going to have Hitesh just jump in into the video and, and tell us more details about event based addings. Thanks, Juan, for giving us a glimpse of what Outlook addings can do and the various scenarios that are possible with it. Hello everyone, I am Hitesh Manwar. I'm part of the PM team with Outlook Extensibility. And in this part of the video, I'll talk about the event-based add-ins and I'll also talk about uh, the requirements at 1.10 uh, that we are bringing out. 
Followed by that, we have a very exciting demo from one of Microsoft's gold partner, Let's Sign It, uh, who have built a demo add-in with the capabilities that we are announcing today. So let's get started. Uh, back at Ignite 2020, we announced a feature called event-based add-ins for Outlook uh, for preview. And I'm extremely happy to say that we are making this feature generally available for on-compose event. Now let's just understand more about what this feature actually is, right? Uh, launch event add-ins or event-based add-ins basically allow the add-ins to launch automatically uh, while composing an email and without requiring any kind of user input. Uh, let me just show an example which will help, uh, help us understand more here. Imagine a scenario in which, uh, say you have to add a recipient to the mail uh, using an add-in, right? Uh, this could be a scenario where you have to log all the emails that goes out uh, by sending this mail over to a specific recipient. And uh, if you have to do this, uh, you have to start composing an email, uh, find the add-in that can do this, and find the button of the add-in that can achieve this specific scenario. Now, uh, what if this add-in was an event-based add-in? In this case, uh, what will happen is the add-in can launch automatically as soon as you, uh, as a user, click on the new message. The add-in launches and can, it can call the same set of APIs which it did in the previous scenario and add the recipient directly on the mail without you as a user requiring to find the add-in or even knowing about the button which can execute this scenario. Right, so this is this is how event based add-ins make things more contextual and it's all automatic. If you have to understand more about uh, what these add-ins can do and what are the characteristics of it, uh, you can you can say that these add-ins uh, require no user inputs as we saw in the demo. Uh, the add-ins can subscribe themselves to different events that happen uh, during a mail compose and the add-ins can launch automatically on those events. Also, uh, these events are, uh, uh, these, these add-ins are UI-less in operation, uh, as in there is no task pane or a dialog box associated with them. Next, uh, these add-ins are also short running in nature, uh, which means that once these add-ins have launched, uh, they get a finite amount of time to complete their scenario, uh, after which the outlook terminates them. And lastly, uh, these add-ins work in compose mode, and uh, we have blocked all kinds of API that can disrupt your mail compose operation uh, with such add-ins. Moving on, uh, I'm also very happy uh, to announce that uh, the requirement set 1.10 uh, that we announced as preview uh, during Ignite is also generally available. And this requirement set is specially suited if you are building an admin managed uh, signature add-in. It has four or five APIs which are specially focused towards building a signature scenario. And to start with, the, the first thing we have is uh, the set signature async. This API allows you to add or replace an, a signature on an email body. And your signature can also have an embedded image in it, or you can even post the image and the set signature async will work. Uh, followed by that, we have get compose type async. Uh, this API is really useful if you want to know the type of mail uh, uh, that is being composed, whether it is a reply mail, whether it is forward, or whether it is a new mail. Now, uh, this type of this API can be really useful if you have uh, uh, if you have if you want to have different signature when you are replying to a mail versus a different signature when you are composing a new mail, right? The next two APIs that we have uh, is is client signature enabled async and disabled client signature async. And these APIs can be really useful if you have to disable the native Outlook signature, uh, which the user might have set. Uh, and you want the user to always use the admin defined add-in managed signature. Uh, using this API, you can disable the native Outlook signature and thus achieve this kind of compliance. And lastly, we have uh, made some changes to the notification message API. And now uh, we give you an option to have a call to action button uh, with the notification messages. 
And with this, uh, the user can just click on the uh, the notification message and open the task pane and uh, achieve enhanced scenarios wherever applicable. And this API is also really useful if you want to have some UI element associated with event based targets. Now, uh, Moving on, as I said in the beginning, we have a very exciting demo from Let's Sign It, who is one of our gold partners. And we have Mario, uh, the product manager from Let's Sign It here with us to demonstrate the add-in that they have built. Over to you, Mario. Thank you, Juan and Hitesh. I'm Mario, product manager at Let's Sign It. We are very happy to showcase our one-of-a-kind email signature solution, and we are here to help companies of all sizes deploy branded email signatures for all employees in a simple and a secure way across all devices. Our main goal at Let's Sign It is to keep things simple, and we are proud to have developed the most user-friendly email signature solution on the market. But we know that deploying such solution to a large number of users could sometimes be challenging, especially for big companies. Deploying and updating email signatures to all stakeholders across your organization can quickly become a very time consuming and inefficient process, which often seems to be a never ending task for the IT teams. That's why with enterprises in mind, we've been working directly with the Microsoft adding team over the last year with one objective in common, improving the overall experience of email signatures in Outlook from the deployment of IT teams to the final user experience. So today, we are excited to officially announce the launch of the Let's Sign It Outlook add-in, the ECS email signature add-in on the market. Let me show you how we are leveraging the new event-based add-in features, as well as the new signature APIs. First, let's see how easy it is now for our partners and clients to deploy Let's Sign It in just a few clicks. At this stage, your Let's Sign It admin will have already created fully customized and branded email signatures and have them assigned to users within the centralized Let's Sign It platform. Now, as the IT admin, all you have to do is sign in into the Microsoft 365 Administration Center. You are now ready to deploy the brand new Let's Sign It add-in for you and your colleagues. Let's Sign It is fully integrated into the Microsoft 365 environment. Using integrated apps, you can now choose how to download the app and then choose the installation scope in just a few clicks whether it would be only for you, for select users, or a company-wide deployment. Once you have chosen the scope, the add-in is then installed directly on the user's accounts, which will allow them to automatically benefit from let's sign in on their different workstations effortlessly, just by connecting their Microsoft accounts. We truly believe this is going to be a game changer for our clients and partners, as they will be capable of easily deploying email signatures in the future. We know that installing apps on workstations was a big pain point for IT admins, so it's exciting to now be able to deploy Let's Sign It without needing other third-party apps for that. Now, let's see how this looks like from an end-user perspective. We'll take a look at Outlook on the web to begin with. Thanks to the simultaneous deployment and Office 265 transparent authentication, a user will access their most up-to-date email signature as soon as they start writing a new email without any action required on their side. This is a game changer because it means that from a user perspective, the entire process is seamless. The way it works is that the authentication is based on the Microsoft 365 account connected through the Azure Active Directory's multi-tenant app. The Azure application is validated when the add-in is installed by the administrator. The let sign it add-in can authenticate the user in a transparent way and it's done only once for all users. Let's sign it integrates into the token validation process provided by Microsoft to ensure the security of exchanges. As we can see, thanks to Let's sign it, the user can benefit from several signatures. Leveraging uncomposed events, users can be notified when a new signature is available. With a single click, they can choose to insert another signature to replace the one that was previously there. The add-in also give you the option to choose which signature will be the most appropriate for a given context. This means that with the add-in, you will be able to differentiate an internal or an external recipient and recommend the most appropriate signature or banner accordingly. This is definitely the most exciting part of this feature. 
With most people working from home nowadays, email signatures can be the ideal way to communicate internally without adding the corporate message overload for employees. In order to minimize insertion times, the adding uses the Office APIs cache management methods. Because let's sign in APIs are connected to the Azure Active Directory, user information is automatically updated in the add-in if changes are made in the Active Directory. Built with data security as a top priority, all communications between the add-in and the Let's Sign APIs are made through HTTPS and authenticated exchanges. We are the only solution that allows end users to consult and update their contact details without modifying the information contained on the organization's Active Directory if the Let's Sign admin has enabled this feature for them. And that's it. It's never been easier to deploy and use email signatures company-wide. Developing the adding together with Juan and Hitesh at Microsoft was a natural next step to our strategic relationship with Microsoft. Indeed, our work with them goes way beyond our status of gold partner. We were actually the first French ISV available on the Microsoft commercial marketplace, and our partners are also able to get Let's Sign It directly from the Microsoft CSP portal. So again, thank you, Microsoft, Juan and Hitesh, for this opportunity to work together the last year to develop our add-in and for giving us the chance to present Let's Sign It today. The add-in is now officially available, and we cannot wait to help Microsoft partners to deploy Let's Sign It in a very simple and a secure manner. Hitesh, over back to you. Right. Uh, thanks, Mario, for that incredible demo uh, of the Let's Sign It add-in. I cannot wait for our users to get their hands on such capability and the add-in features that you're developing. Moving on. Uh, as you know, we have made announcements for event-based add-ins. Uh, it's now GA with OnCompose event and the Mailbox 1.10. It's now GA with all the four or five signature scenario-based APIs. But there are a few things that are of importance and you should keep a note. Uh, to start with, uh, with event-based add-ins, uh, these add-ins are allowed only for admin installations to start with. Uh, we, uh, we will block any end user who tries to get uh, such an add-in from the store. Uh, uh, the the add-in can only work if, the, uh, if, if, if it was given by an admin to the user within an organization. Uh, next, uh, we, uh, we have made uh, this, add, this capability generally available for Outlook Web and Windows. The Mac support will come out later. Also, uh, for deployment, uh, you can uh, do a side-loaded deployment or custom app-based deployment using the integrated app section in admin portal uh, to start with. And for add-ins that want to list on store using this capability or uh, the add-ins that want to update their existing store add-ins to this capability, uh, we will have guidance coming out soon. With Mailbox 1.10, there are four, API, four APIs focused on signature and a clickable notification API improvement. You can use it as is. It's now generally available and there are no caveats. And if you want to know more about any of these features, we have a bunch of documentation and self-help guide uh, available at this link, aka.ms, learn event-based add-ins. Please head there and you can know all about these features. Next, we, uh, as I said, we have event-based add-ins for OnCompose event now on GA, but we are not stopping there. We are bringing more events for the Compose, uh, Compose scenario. And starting today, these events are in preview and you can uh, try, them, uh, uh, try them on Outlook Web as well as Windows. Uh, to start with, we have the recipient change event, uh, which can trigger an add-in uh, when an when a recipient is added or removed from the mail or an appointment. Uh, followed by that on similar lines, we have attachment change event, uh, which can launch an add-in whenever an attachment is added or removed uh, from mail or appointment. Uh, we also have some calendar events, which are appointment time change and recurrence change. If you have calendar add-ins, they can uh, launch when these events occur. Uh, and lastly, we have info by dismiss event, uh, which can launch an add-in when a user dismisses a notification message. Uh, with all these new events in preview, uh, we have Juan who will show us the demo of how to build an event-based add-in and also tell you about the scenarios that are possible with these new events. So over to you, Juan. 
Hey, thank you very much, Hitesh. Hey guys, I wanna show you a quick demo on how you can integrate these new events seamlessly into the Outlook experience. And the example is super simple. It's basically about having a signature for internal and external recipients. So the idea is that while I am typing recipients on my email, uh, if I add an internal recipient like this one for this tenant in this case, I want to add a very, you know, uh, you know, a, a lightweight signature in this case. Uh, and however, if I add external recipients, like for example, in this case, someone in hotmail.com, uh, you will see that if I add this recipient, I will change my signature. I in include a proper Microsoft logo in this case. And I will also want to invite my external recipients to learn more about event-based addings. And by the way, this is a real URL in case you want to learn more about this technology. And that's it. As, as you can see, just by what we are trying to achieve with this technology is that as the user is using Outlook, you can integrate in, in the many different points, you know, logic uh, to, to, to integrate with your business and provide amazing experiences for Outlook users. And it's very simple to create. I just want to show you uh, real quickly. I'm back to VS Code here. Uh, this is a starting project that I used with Joe Office, which is our scaffolding tools, uh, scaffolding tool. And this is an Outlook add-in manifest. I need to do three things on the manifest. The first one is I need to add the runtime element. Uh, uh, this element is the one that it's going to include, you know, pointers to the JavaScript and HTML files that I need to load uh, in order to have the, the event handlers. Uh, I need one URL for uh, Outlook Online and another one for uh, for Windows. In the case of Windows, we are not loading all the browser to instantiate, you know, the you know to, to load you know your code and and, and call event handlers. Uh, we're only loading a JavaScript engine, and we try to to make it very efficient. So this is not always alive and it's not running all the time in the background. It runs when the event happens, and then after some time, we basically kill it or recycle this engine. Uh, and, and for example, if you're composing an email for like 10 minutes or so, and you add another recipient, then you know the engine will bring it back to life to to handle, you know, all those events. Uh, so there are APIs that you can use in order to you know to keep state across uh, JavaScript engine creations, and that you will see in a minute. Uh, the second thing that I need to do on the manifest is I need to add the launch event extension point. This is the, this is the entry that tells Outlook, hey, this add-in is subscribing to all these different events. And in this case, I, I am uh, subscribing to almost all of them. I have an, a new message compose, new appointment organizer, appointment change, recurrence change, attachments change, and recipients change. And you need to include the event as well as the handler that we are going to call with that when that event happens. And all that code needs to be, of course, as, as we, you showed previously, here are the actual URLs that we're going to load the HTML page here for the web view runtime and uh, for Windows. You know, this is the, the, the file that includes all the handlers. Obviously, this file is included in that HTML so that you can actually share the file. Uh, and let's take a look at what's included in commands.js. As you can see, this, this file has all the, the handlers, basically all the, the JavaScript functions that are going to get called when the event happens. And in the case of the message recipient change event, which is the, the one that I used for the demo, I'm just running some basic logic here to identify if the user is internal or external. And given that, you know, this could happen, you know, in many different JavaScript engine sessions, I am adding a property back here, a session data object that said data async stores, you know, uh, just a string. It can be a JSON object, for instance, uh, in memory. And this data is going to be, a, it's a property back available in memory, and it's going to be there for the entire composition of the email. And you can use it from different JavaScript engine events, or you can use it also from the task pane. And then and that's pretty much it. I mean, so, so I am identifying if there are external recipients and if they are, for example, in the case of internal ones, if I go to the definition of this method, uh, this, what it's doing is uh, only concatenating an HTML that I'm gonna insert. So I have I have this base 64 encoded string, which is the logo. I am adding, as you saw, the, an after hours disclaimer so that people don't care about my emails if it's late at night. And then I just have the table with the 
referencing you know the, the inserted image adding the user profile name etc i'm adding the attachment because this is an inline picture that i want to use in the html and finally i call set signature async with correction type html i send the html that i want to insert and that's it uh, and finally, uh, you know, maybe at the end of the file, you, you also need to add the, you need to associate, you know, the, the handlers. So this is basically just registering all these events so that, so that we pick them up. Uh, and that's pretty much it. That's what you need to do in order to have an event based add and running. As you, as you see, it's very straightforward uh, to integrate seamlessly into Outlook. Okay, that was a very simple but powerful demo that shows you how you can what you can accomplish using event-based add-ins. And remember, you can try this today. You just need to install the latest beta build uh, for Office. This is the build that we are recommending you to use. Go to AKMS Learn Event-Based Add-ins to learn more details about how you can use them. And now I want to invite you to think about you know all the different possibilities you have to use this technology and implement new scenarios. I just show you a simple one, which is adding signatures for internal and external recipients while the user is adding recipients to an email. But also, I mean, you have the attachment change event where you can actually suggest, for example, to use links to files in OneDrive as opposed to a very big attachment. You can suggest better meeting times in meetings because we can also we also have the events to the data data uh, date and time changed. Uh, and I know there are, for, for example, some add-ins out there that you can actually order catering for meetings. So you, you want to update all those services that the meeting time changed. Uh, and in general, you know, suggest better meeting times and meet uh, that better working hours, especially now that we are all working from home. So please try it. That's a call to action. Uh, those are the links. If you have any questions, please interact with the team. Uh, so that's it for event-based add-ins, and now I'm going to switch gears to another important topic, which is Mac. I have a message for, for our Mac developers. The first thing that I want to tell you is that uh, regarding the new Outlook for Mac, Mailbox 1.8 is now available, which means that now you can have access to the item send event and implement you know, the potential block on send scenarios. And you also have access to the delegate feature, which is uh, highly requested by you. So the new Outlook for Mac is getting up to speed on the latest that we have on the other platforms. Next is going to be 1.9 and then 1.10 with all the event-based stuff that I showed you in this video. So the investment is, is going on there and we will get to parity very soon. The second thing that I want to mention about Mac is that we are providing you with a simpler transition from code injection add-ins to web add-ins. Now, code injection add-ins, uh, you know, uh, if you, in case you don't know, it's kind of an obscure way you can use to add, you know, extensibility to to uh, Outlook for the Mac. You can find more details in injection plugins. And we don't have a date right now set up for this, but it, we are talking very seriously about you know, not supporting this anymore. So we are asking all uh, all the people who are using code injection add-ins to please make the move to uh, to to web add-ins. Now that we release 1.8, we feel that that you have a, a lot more capabilities that you can you can use on the new web add-ins and and replace them. Um, and also, we know that you have very complex add-ins that are in, in BSTO add-ins that are in Win32 that has similar injection plugin capabilities for Mac. Uh, as you move to web add-ins, one of the things that we that we have been hearing from you is that you want to keep you know the COM and BSTO add-ins working in Windows. And then have a web add-in for for Mac and for uh, for online platforms. And the good news is that we are announcing that you can do this today. So we are adding a tool that is going to give you uh, the option of of having compatibility with with com add-ins and web add-ins. And I, I'm going to talk more details on the next slide about it. So starting on build 16.0.13801, uh, you will find that this tool. Uh, that you can basically suppress a web add-in only on the Windows platform and replace it with a com add-in. So basically, the way it works is if that com add-in is installed, the web add-in is not going to be shown up. Um, and you can do this. You can accomplish this task in, task in two different ways. You can have a group policy or registry entry uh, that you can fill up to you know, indicating the prog ID of the com add-in that is replacing the web ID, uh, the web add-in uh, ID. Or you can also do it through the manifest. Uh, this is already supported, by the way, in Excel, Word, and PowerPoint. 
and now we are adding support for Outlook of the equivalent add-ins element in the manifest. Uh, so you basically type the prog ID, the type of add-in that you want to replace that add-in with. Um, uh, so uh, more information is available at HTTPS, aka MS, come to web in case you want to find more information about how you can accomplish this. And with that, I want to close, you know, uh, this video, uh, just briefly mentioning a, a summary here. Uh, we, we talk about Mailbox 1.8 API and the Uncompose event going GA for Windows and online, uh, which is great. You can use it, please use it today. Add seamless experiences to your to your to your users, and then you're going to have new events that you can experiment and try, you know, new features. Again, remember that this is about seamlessly integrating uh, functionalities uh, as part of the Outlook experience. I also gave you some news about Mac uh, with 1.8 going live, and uh, we also mentioned that the tool to have to provide COM and web add-in compatibility. Finally, a few resources for you if you want to learn more about add-ins. You can go to you know, add-ins, uh, um, follow these links to know in general about Outlook add-ins. Particularly, I, I will I will uh, ask you to go to learn event-based add-ins and check out our patterns and practices because we created uh, one that is super helpful for you if, in case you want to 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 develop, uh, especially with the uncomposed and signature add-ins. And also, please, please, please engage with the team. We love to see your questions in Stack Overflow. We are super active on GitHub as well. If you if you have any issues with the platform, participate with our monthly community call. I, I present there very frequently and give you updates on Outlook add-ins development. And also please join our dev program and suggest new features or potential gaps that we can have in the platform. And that's it for now. Thank you very much. And I thank you very much for your for watching.